The Jackets lose a heartbreaker last night. But the Wings were dethroned by the Kings. I love you guys and welcome into an all new edition of All the Indie Elf right here on Clayfan 2 3. I am your host, Andrew Alford, welcoming you into the program. I gotta tell you, yesterday's show was a treat to be back on the air. We're gonna be back on the air for you for the rest of the winter season and going into baseball season. And uh, we'll have our guest, usually Nick DeVera, stops by. We will have him on the show. We will also have, uh, we're signing up an interview trying to get with Daniel Facer. He's our NFL insider. We'll have him later on in the month of December, late December, into January, looking at the playoff picture and what the Super Bowl is going to be coming up. And also, we'll be making random trips to see the walleye. And the Columbus Blue Jackets as well. And yes, I do have the media guide from the walleye right here. And uh, I'll share you some facts about the walleye today on all Andy Alford. But the Jackets were a heart loser of a heartbreaker. And by the way, before I continue on, this shirt is Hockey Fights Cancer. This is a shirt that the NHL is selling on online on NHLshop.com. They're also selling... Uh, ties and booklets and a portion of the proceeds go to Hockey Fights Cancer and it goes to the American Cancer Society so kudos to the NHL for that idea. But last night the Blue Jackets were a loser 3-2 in overtime against the Calgary Flames they asked his 17th of the season Antoine Verrett his 9th of the season. Jerome McGinley scored the first goal and the game winning goal in overtime Morris gets his 5th of the season. Shots on goal in the game Columbus had 24 shots on net. Calgary had 25 in front of 19,283 fans at the Pangaroom Stadium. And the Blue Jackets did fall short. They were down 2 0 at the beginning of the game. And then they rallied back. And they couldn't fight the pressure yeah, against the Calgary Flames. Columbus will now travel to Vancouver on Wednesday. And that game is not going to be on television. That is a blackout game. The only game you can listen to it is on the radio, or uh, if you have the package, you can listen, watch it on the package, or you can uh, go on to bluejackets.com, bluejackets.nhl.com to listen to the game. How about the Red Wings last night getting dethroned by the LA Kings, five to nothing? Andre Kopitar scored twice in the game, his 12th and 13th. Jack Johnson is second. Muller his first of the season. No goals for the Detroit Red Wings because they get a big goose egg up on the board. Shots on goal for the in the game. And LA had 26 shots on net. Detroit had 51 in front of 17,110. Now Detroit will play on Wednesday against the St. Louis Blues. All their scores in the National Hockey League. The Chicago Blackhawks were a loser 5-7. Over the Colorado Avalanche, the yeah, National Predators five, the Islanders nothing, Atlanta four, Ottawa three. That was a overtime win for Atlanta and Dallas three and San Jose two. Two games in action tonight in the NHL. Pittsburgh taking on Philadelphia. That is on versus at seven o'clock, and Toronto is taking on Edmonton. That game at nine o'clock. And the reason why there were seventeen thousand one hundred and ten at the Joe last night is because. Last night was two Monday night games. Wait, two Monday night games? Well, it's the snow and the snow in game, the roof collapse game, I call it. Uh, the Giants were a winner, twenty-one to three over the Minnesota Vikings, and Brett Favre's two hundred ninety game career playing streak ended last night as Tavares Jackson took over. And he got injured in the first quarter of the game, and he got uh, had something. He had some knee problems. Jackson went 15 for 30 with 118 yards. No touchdowns and one INT. Peyton Manning went 22 for 37 for 187 yards. One touchdown pass and two INTs. And it was a free ticket. They sold out of tickets in a matter of t 5 to 10 minutes. That's what they were estimating. And, I mean, you show the people. They just rushed the center. Rushed right in to get a seat. And, um... It was a good crowd on hand for that game. I was the, I was not in attendance. I was at a, a local pub watching the game with some friends of mine. I know who, the, who they are. Uh, by the way, happy belated birthday to Jennifer Mondragon. 
Uh, Baltimore was a winner, 34 to 28 in overtime. Joe Flacco was was really good, but Schwab was really bad too. Uh, Flacco was 22 for 33, 235 yards, two touchdown passes, no INTs. Matt Schwab was 31 for 62, 393 yards, three touchdown passes, and two INTs. That game went into overtime and didn't end about until about 11:45. So I got to catch the end of that game after the Giants game, and I was flipping back and forth between the Blue Jackets and the Calgary Flames. Uh, MLB news for you. Uh, Cliff Lee signs with the Philadelphia Phillies. Five years. $120 million. You got Roy Holiday. You got Cliff Lee. That's going to be a great pitching match. You got Cole Hamels. Look out. Look out, Mets fans. Might, might be early to pack it in, but it might be way early to pack it in, but I'm just saying right now. The Mets don't have a good chance this year. Uh, ECHL news for you today. Gwinnett, uh, there were, it's only one game in the ECHL. It will be Greenville and Gwinnett. That's at 7.05 tonight. Uh, the Walleye acquired, acquired Jason Lapin from Bakersfield for a future consideration. He has two goals and 12 assists for 23 points. And um, taking a look at the uh, stats here on um, Lapin. There's no stats on Lapin, by the way. I'm just flipping through here. Uh, but this is a uh, interesting buy. This is a good Christmas present if you're looking for uh, somebody who's a Toledo hockey fan. It has all about the walleye. It has all the ECHL teams and the information about it and frequently asked questions like, here's a question for you. And here's we're going to be doing this now. Let's ask the question. Uh, what is the salary cap in the ECHL? And here's your answer. The weekly salary cap for the 2010-2011 season is 12 thousand dollars and the weekly salary floor cap is eight thousand five hundred dollars and what is the minimum salary for an ECHO player I'd say. teams are required in 2011 2010 2011 to pay a rookie player a minimum of three hundred and seventy dollars per week and a returning player of a maximum four hundred and ten dollars per week a returning player is classified as a player who appears on the team's season ending or playoff roster or who has played 25 or more professional hockey games. That's your ECHL question of the day. A recommendation for the day. The Walleye return home on the 26th, on the 26th, the 29th, and on New Year's Day to play Kalamazoo on the 26th and the 29th, and Cincinnati on the 1st of the year. Uh, tickets are available 419-725-WALL, ToledoWallet.com, or the Huntington Center box office. Uh, also, Mudhead season tickets are on sale right now. And, of course, you go pick up on NHL shop, shop.NHL.com, the Hockey Fights Cancer shirt. It's a great Christmas present, and it goes to a nice proceed. Um, I'm Andrew Elford. I hope you have an excellent day. And remember, as always, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together, especially the teams behind me. And to you, the viewers. Victory is sweetest when you have tasted defeat. Have a nice night, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow.